Yep, you know what time it is, man. This is, of course, your favorite channel, man, CTB. This is Chan Tuck Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. So what up to him, man? What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Well, definitely. You tuned into a seven we call here, Chin Check. This is where you rock your guys' channel with boxing news, boxing information, boxing rumors. And sometimes we put some money in you guys' pocket by giving you the odds of the fight. But today I want to talk about a, uh, a statement that I made on my, my post fight this weekend from watching the uh, watching Pitbull Cruz fight on the Luis Ortiz versus uh, Andy Ruiz undercard. Um, I made a statement on my last on my last uh, video talking about how I think the Devin Haney versus Pitbull Cruz uh, fight would turn out. And uh, I'm just curious to get my boy, like I said in the video, I'm curious to get my boy mom response to that. Um, I said Devin Haney would be running for his life when he fought uh, Pitbull Cruz, or if he fought Pitbull Cruz. I did say that Devin Haney was going to win. I'm going to say that again. I did say Devin Haney would come out with a, uh, with the victory, but he'd be running for his life in the fight. Uh, what's, what's, your, what's your response to that, man? Um, from that response, for that statement. Um, I have to say it's pretty accurate. I, like you said, a lot of people are not going to like it. And like I said, I'm a big Devin Haney fan. But I know if he's going to beat Cruz, he can't stand in front of Cruz and, and trade. That's not what Devin Haney does. We all know that that's one of his weaknesses. He don't he don't really have that 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 power to really stop somebody in their tracks or sometimes get their respect. And Cruz has underrated defense, and he also can take a shot. So I can see Devin Haney maybe looking more clean as far as you know what I'm saying? It's getting off, getting off on him and, uh, other than Tank Davis because that was more of a, a kind of sloppy. I think I think Tank, I think Tank Davis caught off guard, honestly. I think he didn't realize he, he, I, I don't realize he was that good. So I think that was more of it too. I think if Tank Davis fought him again, he would be, it would be a better fight for Tank Davis, but I think it still won't be easy. But I think that in that fight, in my opinion, like you said, I think Haney will win. But I think he will win like 75 and 8 to 4. And what's going to happen is because it wasn't a sighting fight and that he didn't stand in front of him, people are going to say he lost. People are going to say he ran. He, he, he uh, Cruz was the aggressor. He, he seemed like he was more in the fight. All he was doing was running around like a chicken and so forth. And that and Cruz got robbed. That's what people are going to say. That's what the narrative is going to be. Even though if you watch the fight and know anything about ring generalship, that he probably gonna win the fight eight four seventy five, but it's gonna be a lot of people that think he lost that fight. So you sound it sounded to me like you comparing it more to the Floyd Mayana fight one, more more so than the second fight. Cause me, I, I compared it to the second fight where Floyd was dominant in the fight. Floyd won it, he won it by a landslide on the points on the point scale, but Mayana made it rough. And, and that the people don't remember, he actually knocked out Floyd too from that fight. While Floyd got caught by an overhand right counter in the corner. Right before the bell rung, and if you see Floyd two flying out of his mouth, that's why. That's how I think Pitbull Cruz versus uh, versus Devin Haney would go. I think it'd be rough in spots of the round, but Devin Haney will outbox him so much of the round that he'll win the round. Like he'll win the round on points, but it's gonna be a rough ass fight. He gonna catch some. He gonna catch some shots. Um, I could see it also going the way you saying the way like Mayana versus uh, Floyd one went, where he made it rough and rugged. But I think Floyd. I think Devin Haney is too much in his prime for that. His foot, his foot speed is still great. He's still in his 20s. When Floyd fought Mayana then, he was in his upper 30s. So his foot speed wasn't the same. So he couldn't keep Mayana off of him with his feet the way he did the second fight, I think. I think he prepared for it better in the second fight. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest, man. Hearing you talk about it, it could. It's a possibility. Maybe he can catch Haney with something that, that, that make Haney sit still. Kind of how Lenoris did. How he caught Haney and made him sit still for a little while. And made him grab a hold for a couple of rounds. I don't know if people remember the Devin Haney versus Lenoris fight, but two of those rounds after he got hit, Devin Haney was doing a lot of holding. And we criticized him here on CTB about all the holding he was doing after he took that shot. So if people were cruising, catch one of them shots early, they had Devin Haney grabbing the holding a lot. It could be like Mayana Floyd won. It could be a little rough and rugged on him. And uh, I don't know how Devin Haney going how you compare how you hold on that. Uh, what do you think the fans would say? You said fans would say people were Cruz won the fight because it was a close fight. What do you think uh, Devin Haney fans would say if it's a close fight? Will you think they'll say uh, Devin Haney struggled in the fight? Or you think they'll give Pitbull Cruz credit for being just an underrated, tough matchup? I think they'll get both of them credit. I think that the Devin Haney fans going to give Cruz his credit because I think at this stage, we got to stop looking at uh, Cruz as just some type of gatekeeper. He proved that he's a contender. And like you said, you said on the last video, you thought it was going to be a, a very, very good chance of him being a champion at 135 soon, especially when people start moving out the division. 
the only thing I will say about that, well, before I get to the rest of it, is that he has very, very bad luck when it comes to the championship uh, fights, unless he get a vacant, because when Tank and Haney move up, you got Keyshawn, you got Keyshawn Davis, and you got Shakur Stevenson coming mm-hmm. right behind you. So it's like, you got to find that vacant belt before they get to it, because mm-hmm. that's going to be a tough-ass fight. And I think very highly of Cruz, but would I pick him over Shakur Stevenson? No. Nah. Keyshawn Davis? I can't nah. say yet because mm. Keyshawn is young. He is yeah. young. I think I think if, 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 you give, if you give him a little bit more time, I don't think Cruz can beat him either, but maybe can catch him because he's still young. He ain't been in there with a guy like that. But either way you look at it, it's going to be tough for him to get that championship. But I think that – yeah, I don't think they're going to they gonna, they gonna like to perform. Because if you're a Devin Haney fan, you know what he do. You know he's not gonna sit there and bang. He's not gonna sit there. I think people that Devin Haney fans appreciate the art of boxing that they, they get overlooked. You know what I'm saying? The chess match, the the ring generalship, the the, the hit and not uh and not get hit. A lot of people don't appreciate that more in boxing. Everybody wants to rock them, sock them, stand in front of you, slug for twelve rounds, and beat your brain in. That's not what Devin Haney gonna do. So I think his fans know that. So I don't think they'll be disappointed. But I think by the end of the fight, they'll be giving Cruz his credit as uh, one of the top guys in 135. Yeah, you kind of took my last question when, uh, when you said about the, the up-and-coming 135ers. Um, <laughs> I, agree with, but I agree with everything you said, though. I do think Keyshawn Davis, by, by the time that happens, I think he'll be he'll be where Cruz is right now. I don't think he'll be at the championship level, per se, but he'll be at the cusp of it. But um, Shakur Stevens will be ready. Is Frank, Martin, is Frank Martin ready for uh, Cruz? Frank Martin? Uh, possibly. I mean, he got a good push. He got the marketing push behind him with, uh, you know, he got with uh, Earl Spence and them. So I, I think he could be. I could be, but I don't, I don't think, I know Shakur Stevenson will be because he's already unified at 130. So I know he'll come up ready. But I think PBC, they seem to have a marketing push behind uh, Pitbull Cruz. So I, I think they will, as soon as people start moving up, they're going to push him in for a title, uh, for a vacant title immediately. And like, he'll be the first person that put up for it, I think. You know what? The more I think about it, being that PBC has the same strategy with all their divisions and how they market their fighters, yeah, I can see him getting a vacant title, like you said, with Cruz, because his popularity is growing. And because of that, I, I believe that if Frank Martin can can keep winning like he winning and look impressive, they might not fight for the title, but they'll be fighting to unify titles. Or, he'll be, or Frank Martin might be fighting Cruz to try to win a title. So I can mm-hmm. see PBC pushing both of them because they're both on PBC. I can see them pushing both of them guys because, once again, I hate this in boxing, but Keyshawn Davis and Shakur Stevens is, is with top rank. And you know how that top rank PBC shit works. So most likely, Frank Martin and Cruz are going to be matched up like Keyshawn Davis and Stevens could be matched up in the future. So I think that's what we might be looking at maybe a year and a, year and a half from now, a year from now, maybe late next year. Give it, give it take, yeah, give it take. I think... I'm gonna be honest too. That Frank Martin fight, you put that in Texas, it's gonna it's gonna do good numbers. I think yeah. you put it in Texas, it's gonna be good numbers. You can put it in LA, it's gonna do good numbers because uh, you seen the crowd was going crazy, more crazy for him than it was going for Andy Ruiz this past weekend. Yeah. The Cruz won, the crowd the crowd was going crazy for Cruz. So he's a he's a man, he's a marketable fighter, man. And I think uh, his persona, the mask that he wears to the ring, and then you no know, putting it, bringing the son to the ring, he's he's a relatable. He's a relatable yeah. fighter yeah. coming from the, coming from the mud, so I think a lot of a lot of especially a lot of Latino fans they love it about him. So he's gonna have a say again. He's very hard not to root for. Yeah, he's very hard not to root for, man. He, he's a hard nosed fighter, man. He comes do his job and go home. That's, that's the type of nose type of fighter he is. With that being said, stylistically, if you Earl Spence, my last question: If you Earl Spence stylistically, would you put Frank Martin in with Pitbull Cruz before you have to? I know at some point you're gonna have to to get the belt. For the uh, for for title contention or for for a title, but stylistically, I think people will cruise give Frank Martin a little bit of issues because Frank Martin doesn't have the fastest feet in in, in the division, in my opinion. And he's, he he does he is a great counter puncher, but he's a volume puncher, and I don't know if you want to mix volume punching with somebody like Pitbull Cruz. What you think about that that statement? Yeah, I think his experience is not caught up with a guy like. Pitbull yet. I think that that rugged style, man, it takes experience and it takes building yourself up to get prepared for that. I can't, if you throw a young fighter in with a guy like Pitbull, you can really can fuck him up. Like, you really can ruin his career. So, I, I know us like as Adrian fans, Broner. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Adrian Broner. I know that I, as fans, we want those big fights as soon as possible. But if I got my manager head on, I'm not throwing him in that fight no earlier than late next year. And that's, and that's probably early 2024. Because 2023, I want him to fight, you know, a Cobra. And then mm-hmm. maybe step up a little bit above that, above him. And then after that, I think he might be ready for a cruise. But right now, I don't want to see that's too big of a jump from where he's already uh, fought so far, as far as opposition. And that's kind of weird to say because just, just earlier this year, uh, late, was late last year, I think, when he fought Tank, nobody knew who Cruz was. So he yeah. went to all of a sudden have two fights after after fighting Tank to everybody saying, you know what, these guys ain't ready for, for Pitbull Cruz. Rockstar now. Yeah, Rockstar now. Coming off a Gamble knockout who, who was 40 plus years old and a guy that nobody knew and, and Martinez this weekend. Was it Martinez? What was the guy's name? I forgot the guy's name already. This shows how. Yeah. That shows, that shows the, the yeah. level of competition. But, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to the fight, man. You got anything else you want to add to the topic of Tank? Uh, I think we covered it all. All right, man, with that being said, man, this is, of course, your favorite channel, man, CTB. This is Chin Tuck Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. Say peace to him, man. All right, everybody, please, please. We're still trying to grow, so hit that sub uh, button for us. Like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. You know why? Because we love boxing and you love boxing. But most of all, God, peace and love. Y'all take care.